Hello to our friends, followers, everyone who's not indifferent uh, to the guitar tone. Uh, this is Soviet Guitar Effects Online Store and Museum, and today we have a great possibility to talk to a great man, great musician, uh, guitar effects builder, and founder of Dev by Audio Effects, Oliver Ackerman. Hello. So, uh, you visited uh, Russia for the third time, yeah? Yes. What are your impressions? Uh, I love Russia. The people are so good and full of life and um, I think that there's they like to have a good time and there's such cool architecture and everything around that uh, it's really see like a vibrance in the people like we played this show yesterday and in St. Um, Petersburg, yes? Petersburg and we're just walking around on the street and the kids are coming up and hanging out and drinking on the street and you know and like drawing pictures and stuff really cool so uh, I love Russia uh, what three words uh, as associated uh, with Russia in three words in three words Russia uh, when you hear the word Russia in three words what words associated with uh, I, I guess I would think Rocket to Russia because I always had that uh, Ramones record and it was so cool and so um, I just always remember that and it kind of like intrigued me as like what was kind of going on and what's happening because but I but they're they're talking about war but I never even thought about that I was always thinking that they were gonna shoot on a rocket over because it's like them on the rocket so <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool but um, okay cool um, I have uh, one political question. All right. Just only one. That's Should fine. Fuck the politics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> I'll read you some statements uh, of American people about your president Obama. Here we are. Uh, one man writing. Never in 58 years did I think I would see a Russian president have a better approval rating in America than the American president. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Pretty what funny. do you think about it, about the popularity of Putin in America? Uh, it's crazy, yeah, it's strange. Is it, is it uh, really so? It is, yeah, it's all real, that's for sure. And it's, it's all sort of, the people of America are kind of stubborn and something, at least a lot, in sort of like the homeland of America, and so... They kind of, you know, want to sort of shock people a little bit and be a little bit kind of crazy. And they like something that's strong and powerful. And they see Putin and there's like these images of him, you know, on this horse with his shirt off, you know, being a brave <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. warrior and everything. And then they see, you know, they kind of want a dog on, you know, the president because he's democratic and maybe he didn't make something work out right and doesn't seem as strong. So they're... You know, there's a lot of people in America who are like, "Woo, yeah, kick their ass and stuff." You know, so I think they identify with um, someone who is a strong physical leader like Putin. Okay, if he yeah. is or he isn't, you know, that good. That's a different. Quote. Well, okay, let's talk about music. Uh, let's see good. That. Uh, Wiki said that Wikipedia said that uh, Place to Bury Strangers has been yeah. held as the loudest band in New York. Is it true? How long does your band remain? Uh, I mean, we play really crazy loud, and I mean, I really, since as long as I can remember, I like really loud music, and so we keep on, as your ears get worse and worse, you keep on making things louder and louder, so uh, I guess it's just going to get louder, so... <laughs> more louder. More louder always, unless you find some sort of deaf musicians out there that want to compete, uh, okay. we'll see. That's the question about uh, your latest album, Transfixation. How was it uh, perceived by critics in your country? Uh, it had some different mixed reviews, but mostly really favorable. I think people like that we kind of took a sort of different direction and there's kind of a live approach and um, to the way that we sort of recorded the record and came up with the songs like as much of just sort of a band, which I think gave it a lot more dimension than some of the other records which or maybe even like the first record which was all pretty much me who recorded and wrote the song so I think um, it just really showcased the talents of the band at the time 
and uh, I think people really, really like that. And so people still keep on telling me how great of a record that they think it is, so I guess it seems like it was perceived well. But I don't read too much uh, reviews about our music because I kind of don't really want to be influenced by outside influence because a lot of times people don't really take the time to sit with a record and you just must do what you do yeah exactly yeah i mean i think that's just more pure form of art you know and so try to do that Uh, actually yesterday i I read a review on it on transfixation from from russian mug in internet and so many critics so they said that uh, you are hiding behind your guitar effects I uh, just can't compose songs. I think uh, you have it not for the first time. Uh, and in my, in my opinion, it's a misconception. Uh, after that, I played your own album, stuck in that noise, and decided to see live videos. And the first uh, video that I saw was your appearance at uh, KXP before your last year's US tour. Um, you know, really, KXP is one of my favorite stations. Sure, <laughs> yeah. me too. They are great. And I was really impressed by that video and great, great sound on it. <coughs> um, then uh, I mentioned that you played on a damaged red Jaguar. Since when did such love for disfigured instruments appear? Uh, I mean, I just I love instruments, and uh, you know we kind of are sort of a little bit rough with the instruments, so they get disfigured. But you know we keep um, keep them going. You know I don't need. You know, I don't really need all these effects and stuff that maybe I'll be hiding behind or even the most perfect guitar or anything. You know, it's kind of, for us, it's more about an aesthetic and sort of uh, discovering and find, making these things kind of happen on the spot. And we don't really need anything special. We play lots of shows and, you know, if I can just have an amplifier, then that's good enough for me. And I've got guitars which on this tour which you know so part of the tuning pegs break off and stuff so there's only like a few strings that work and <coughs> that's good enough you know you kind of just adapt what that is and turn that into the sound of a place to be a stranger uh, maybe do you believe in certain magic power or damage guitars <laughs> uh i think that when you kind of a have a, a little bit you know <laughs> when uh you have a relationship with an instrument uh it's it, it's kind of it's nice you're sort of like hanging out with your old friend or something so it's good also you're an offset fan yeah, yeah. Uh, do you use only jaguars as well or any other instruments uh, most of your jacks are completed with lipstick pickups uh, does it make them sound like done electro maybe guitars or is there another reason why you use lipstick pickups um, I use these lipstick pickups just purely because I like the sound of them and they were really cheap is uh, when I first started using these pickups uh, was when I was a lot poorer and um, and I just found these pickups that cost like seven dollars a piece or something and then I just bought enough for all of my guitars and bought a bunch more because it, we sometimes again damage our guitars and pickups sometimes break so I wanted something that I could keep on getting that same kind of sound out of and uh, I just thought those pickups sounded fantastic. So, you know, there was a bunch of different cheap pickups that I bought at the time. I could be using pink strap pickups if that was what ended up being the ones that sounded the best. Okay. Uh, uh, do you experiment with different tunes of pop guitar? Like, yeah. Like later on, the person move maybe? Sure. We do less of that when we play live because um, there's a lot of that on the recordings of things that we do. But when it's live, we kind of there's sort of a flow to a show and how things are going, and we're kind of almost like hanging on for dear life to even make the show sort of happen. So uh, as much we can kind of focus on you know projecting this emotion, this feeling in the songs, and the power of what's going on and maybe not exactly as precise if you have like two or three drone strings or something. I think that that's more important for the show and really like kind of uh, projects a stronger message. And and recording sort of a different thing, like, um, you know, you sort of have to use some more of those kinds of tricks and do sort of kinds of things because you're creating an environment that you're not, uh, you we're not in complete control of. When you go listen to our record at home, you, you know, you have control of the volume and what environment you're kind of listening to the music in. So, 
uh, you know, you kind of have to make the album more amazing than it would be to go see live. And when it's live, it's just, you know, we're right there and we can force the music down your throat or whatever, so. Nice, okay, uh, my favorite question. <laughs> In 1991, when you were a 15 years old boy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Nirvana's Nevermind album was released. What is it for you, for different people that you knew? Was it really like detonation of a bomb? What was that? Uh, I mean, I just thought Nirvana was great, but it didn't even seem like, at the time, it was like right when I was kind of discovering a lot of music, and so they were just another one of those cool bands, honestly, you know? And so... Uh, there were a bunch of awesome bands that I was finding out about at that time that were, you know, I listened to probably, you know, just as much as Nirvana or any of these things. And Nevermind was just a record that just broke through all the radio. So it was kind of awesome for a brief moment in those like one or two years, it kind of transformed and finally people were playing really awesome music on the radio and it helped me find out about a bunch of other bands that I would have never found out about. But... I just thought they were an awesome band, and I didn't know that it was, at the time, that it was going to be such, like, an impact to bring down the wall and break punk rock and all of that, so, uh, but, I mean, when I was that age, you know, I was finding out about Sonic Youth and Dinosaur Jr. and, um, you know, Ministry and all sorts of cool bands that I thought were awesome. Okay. Uh, can you name five albums that influenced uh, you as a musician as well? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, oh, man. it's There's this Matches album. It's called, like, Sephoria, I think, or something. And uh, that album is incredible. It's such a cool mood. It's a recent record that just came out maybe a year ago. And um, it's so neat. The, the, the mood and the feel of that record is really cool. Um, the, uh, the first Cocteau Twins record, Garlands, it's, like, so haunting. And I, I, I'd never heard anything like that. And you kind of, uh, the singer is like making up her own language at the mm -hmm. time. And you, you don't even know. You're like, is this something that you can relate to and channel? But it kind of just makes your mind wander and go to so many different places to kind of try to grasp what's going on. So that's really killer. Um, the, uh, the first Ramones record, that record's awesome from start to finish. I mean, I had that cassette tape and played it so much that it used to have this like, really intense screeching noise that would go along with the whole record, which uh, kind of added another instrument to the Ramones, which was really good. Um, the uh, That My Bloody Valentine album isn't anything. It was so cool. I just, I don't know, it just sort of seemed like this was a whole new type of punk music when I had sort of first heard this. It's like fast and aggressive at times and really noisy and yet the guitars sound like they're beaming down from space or, or who knows or you don't even know what the heck is going on. Um, that's really record, really awesome. And uh, the Jesus and Mary Chain Psycho Candy, that record is just a bunch of screeching and almost like chainsaw noises and uh, it's kind of the thing which you would, at least I would think, I had a record of it and it had been played a lot of times. And it was similar to the Ramones where it had this kind of like really intense screeching noise to it. Mm -hmm. But there was something that was very peaceful about that, I thought. And like, um, kind of uh, would be the cure if I had a headache or something. Uh, so do you mostly associate your band's music as noise rock or as a showcase? Uh, I don't know. I think we're maybe more punk. Mm -hmm. Rock, I think but uh, those times you only play music, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true, so. Um, so, uh, what was the reason for you to start making your own guitar pedals? To kind of, uh, you know, I wanted to find different sounds that I couldn't get anywhere else. And so, you know, I was kind of buying a lot of different effects pedals at the times, a long time ago, and I uh, just wanted to create and, you know, more and more music and crazier music and do, you know, explore the world of music and sounds and it just sort of seemed natural to kind of figure out what those sounds were and how to make them and then how to push that envelope to create something beyond all the equipment that I had. Um, many guitar effects builders had a big collection of different guitar pedals that were made. Do you also 
uh, own such kind of collection. Tons and tons of pedals, yeah, yeah, definitely. They've got, there's all these boxes at our uh, pedal building space which are labeled things like the best pedals and pretty good pedals and pedals that were found underneath the sink and things like that. So, uh, uh, ha have you owned any Soviet guitar effects in your collection? I do. I have, um, I don't know the company because I can't really read it, but it's like a compressor pedal and it's like green. Um, and, and it's like uh, kind of big and it has like what would look like an elevator button as the stomp switch <laughs> um, and it says I think compressor on it ah, yes it's electronica yeah yeah I think so yeah 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 it's yeah. pretty uh, good uh, so what do you think about Russian music do you have a chance to listen to some underground Russian bands maybe uh, a little bit not so much we played with a really cool band yesterday that was really good and uh, you know, some some things that I've heard are really cool. We've had some options to play with some bands that were really cool, and uh, and I like them. But I don't know too many Russian bands. Okay, so we don't have enough time. So thank you so much for the great time. Excellent, uh, thank you. I really you. hope that your Russian tour leaves only pleasant memories and definitely will help, perhaps encourage you for different musical creations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs> have a good one. Oh, great. You can use it. Just plug and play. Perfect. Excellent. What is this? Um, this is just a. Uh, oh, it, it doesn't normally fit in the plug? Okay. Okay, awesome. Uh, this is uh, our Russian pedal brand. Awesome. That I produce. No way. Cool, yeah, man. Yeah, so cool. It's Russia. Incredible. We, now we have uh, four pedals. In what is this pedal? This Cat is, this is a oh, whoa! That looks incredible. Sign for you. Oh my gosh, man! Thank you so much. That is so cool. Can you use it too? Yeah, I will use it. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. That's super cool. Come here, give me a hug. Thanks, man. That's awesome. We're, we're looking uh, for how to get effects pedals all over the world. Or... Yes, yes. Awesome. Cool. Well, you can write me anytime, yeah, and I will help you out you're, anyway. You're, you're my friend on Facebook. Oh, cool. But you really don't know about this. That's all right. Yeah, well, I know. you never know what you do. But sure, write me out. Oh, cool. I write you. That's my account. We especially in museum. Oh, yeah. Collected, collected uh, different sort of effects. Awesome. I write you. Write me. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you so, so much. Some photos and that's all. Sure, let's do it. Wow. That is so awesome, man. Yes, we do. Like, mm, it's full of no, 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 no. Well, well, what was it? Great. No, that's awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. Just plug and play. Plug and play and then there we go. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, maybe we should. We should.